Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a video about what I would recommend as some beginner books for like beginning witches slash just getting into the, like that side of things like the astrology and tarot and just things like that. I don't have any books about tarot but um just if you're getting into things like that I just have a few books I want to recommend that have helped me a lot recently. I think they're all really really fantastic. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to talk about them. How's your day going? I hope it is going wonderful. I hope you have... Why are we so hard? But I hope you've been having a wonderful time despite all that is going on in the world and yeah so I thought that oh, my necklace is all sorts of messed up Ye. I thought I would make this video to uh, help you out with you know your 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 wishy like hobbies you know the hobbies that sometimes we keep in the closet and away from the rest of our family and that's okay if you do that anyways so the first book I want to talk about is moon spells I think it focused on it, I don't know. It's by Diana Alquist. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's how to use the phases of the moon to get what you want. And it talks a lot about, um, I haven't read through each thing completely, but pretty much so, but it talks a lot about how our bodies live through the cycles of the moon. And she talks about in the beginning how she realized her life events would start to add up with things of the moon, how, um, uh, by her friend saying that around the full moon, 911 ambulance, like, 911 calls were absolutely insane. They get a lot more stirred up around there. So she wanted to do a lot more research. And so not only does this book talk about the moon phases and why they do that and what the best spell is it has a bunch of spells too it gets to that point and she talks about a lot of different things achieve your powers tap into the hidden power of the moon um it's really good especially along with some other books that i'm going to be talking about that have to do with gardening because you can garden by the moon and everything so there's a lot we're just naturally supposed to live in the cycles of the moon and if you'd like to learn more about that this is a really good book the next book I have to recommend, I have not gotten that far into, but so far I am loving what I am into it, and it is Astrology, um, an enlightened primer for starry-eyed beginners. And oh my gosh, this has everything you want to know. Um, it tells you what you're reading on a birth chart, not just the basic stuff, you know. Most people get their, their moon and their rising sign and maybe their mercury sign and like, what all those and then what all those mean but this goes into detail like as you can see this book thick about all of that and I personally love astrology it talks about you know retrogrades and things like that how we live through retrogrades what you're supposed to do how it affects your energy and how it affects just things and what's the best way to prepare for that or handle that, you know? And right now we actually entered a Mercury Retrograde today, so that's really fun. Um, this Mercury Retrograde, we're flourishing, we're doing the best that we can, and that's all I have to say about that. Oh, this book is also by Madeline Gerwick. I'm so... My apologies if I forget to say the author right after, but I'll also try to put... Just kick the tripod, why don't you? I'll also try... I'll also try to put all the links in the description to where you can find these books because some of them I didn't get um, online and some I did, but the majority I did, so I'm sure every single one of these will be in the description box because I'm going to find them because it's a little weird to make a, book, a video about recommended books and not put them in the description for you to find. You're on your own, Sunny. Sorry. I know this next book I'm talking about, I did not buy online. So hopefully I can find it online because it is fantastic. I have read pretty much this entire book. It um, is called The Magical Family. 
It's by Monica Cors Corson. It is fantastic, especially what I'm trying to accomplish, like having a witchy, like family, intricated life, like pagan Wiccan maybe. You know, we're getting there. I'm figuring out the difference between the two, so you know, don't come for me if I say anything just whack weird you know I'm still figuring it out so that's yeah but it's pagan living in harmony with nature and it is fantastic because it is from this mother's perspective who which she turned Wiccan but she talks about growing up about pagan and how her family was the opposite she talks a lot about different problems and things she's had with her kids and them growing up knowing being known as pagan pretty much and she has a bunch of things in here like fun activities that you can do as a family that are pagan and wiccan and that she has a lot of like special concoctions in there like that are pretty practical or like food even and it's just really awesome to see someone's perspective about that and it's also what got me into gardening because she has so much in here about gardening and plants and herbs and like how she sets up her own gardens and like she gives you little like diagrams like here let's see if I can find one this right here is the dream garden she has a fairy garden and a children's garden I believe but just a little this is right here she has all of it laid out and everything labeled you know she has creeping thyme potted jasmine lemon balm she talks about a lot of different things and their elements, their ruling planet that's also why the astrology is pretty important so that you can get a feel of generalized basis of everything so that maybe you're not so confused you know that's I my hair why why you do this why you just stick up like that I guess this whole video is my hair my hair's just gonna do that unless I do that haha <laughs> prank this one is a really tiny one but it's really helpful it's Gardening and Planting by the Moon 2020 by Nick Kohlerstrom. It's a calendar of all the days in 2020. Of course, I'm sure there'll be a 2021. But it's all the days in the calendar of 2020. And they have these little symbols beside them that mean which day is the best day for planting. How to sum it up is like on fire sign days, dual days that um, the moon is in a fire sign, you are better off planting... Um, is better to plant fruits and stuff. Earth signs are root days. Water signs are all your leafy greens and leaf days. Your air signs are flower days and your fire signs are fruit days. June 18th, um, I'm not sure what everything means yet, but it's in Aries and it changes at some point today to be an earth sign, so bam. There you go. It till and then on Sunday the solar eclipse. It says no gardening today. So I want to look up, you know, why you can't garden on the solar eclipse. I'm not gonna go against it. This is a book about teaching you how to plant by the moon, and it's one of the the world's biggest secrets. You can't change my mind. Sorry. I have one more gardening book, which is called Root to Stem, and it is by Alex Layard. It is so cool for someone who wants to know about gardening and what what is going on and like what everything is this this title page it has at the bottom here in order everything that is drawn on here so i think that is really really cool one and it literally talks about natural not a seasonal guide to natural recipes and remedies for everyday lives tells you like what is the best time to grow everything and what um season and this is spring and it's all the list of like food remedies for allergies it gives you all sorts of tips and hints and little concoctions you can make it tells you all of these via season so if we go to summer to summer first thing getting the most from the sun it gives you a lot of helpful things about what the sun gives you and why to spend time out there and like why it makes you why it's better for your life and it tells you how to make your own sunscreen and it tells you all about seasonal food and opportunities of the season so I really recommend this book for anyone who's looking to get really deep into gardening and knowing all sorts of just natural things for that and just natural ways of life 
recommend her. The next book I would recommend is called The Little Book of Pocket Spells Everyday Magic for the Modern Wish by Akasha Moon. So, Little Book of Pocket Spells. It is pretty tiny, as you can see, and it is so good, so cute. Like, the first thing in here is it tells you to make a magic name that is like the name you go by in like the world which you practice. And the, one of the first things it gives you is a roar, an auroric facial. So like a facial you do with your aura energy. That it, it's just, it has all sorts of little things like that. It's pretty much a bunch of little things you can do every single day to incorporate in your life that aren't big, just huge spells. Like, you know, fast good luck right there. Or, and they're practical. Protecting a child is a great way to get started because some of them are more like spells and you know some of them do require or not require but tell you know what phase of the moon to do that under because it's recommended and it's just a great way to as the back says bring some magic into your life in a little very kind of discreet way so if you're more of a discreet person this is I would definitely recommend this book for you for sure right, and for our last book we have the spell book for new witches by Ambrosia Hawthorne essential spells to change your life and this is pretty much a big, big, big booty book. <laughs> big booty book of just any kind of spell you really could think of. It has a lot, especially if you're new to witchcraft and you know nothing about making your own spells or you're just not comfortable with that. Um, would recommend this because this has some good ones. I'm planning to use some out of this book and cast some. I will just really quickly give you some examples of like the categories of the different type of um of the different type of spells it has. It's not recording for some reason, but it, at the beginning of the book, it has a bunch of essential oils in the kitchen, the a simple witch's pantry. It has incense, it has candles, crystals, book of shadows. It tells you a bunch of information about that and all the different types of the moon, moons there are like the names of the moons each month because they do have names and the cal and like the four seasons and equinoxes it has that in here but i will really quickly just give you some examples so part 1 is practical magic part 2 you finally get into the spells and you have romantic love money matters and prosperity work and career you have friends and family, health and healing, protection and forgiveness, well-being, success and abundance. And all of those categories have tons of spells underneath them, as you can see, that you can flip to. And it's just really practical and really nice. And the last book that I'm going to talk about, but it's not necessarily one I would recommend for beginners, is this one, Green Magic by Ann Mora. It introduced me to how it has how to create and cast spells, the difference between a, cell, a spell's purpose and its goal, how to move energy with gestures, stages of energy flow, types of spells within the green tradition, psychology of green magic, and access to energies within natural objects. So it's a very natural green based book and it kind of makes sure you, you know, want to connect to nature properly and how to connect to nature properly and carry that good energy and components of spell crafting it also has a big appendix 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 of a bunch of herbs and then we get to the runic tables this is where i learned all about runes and have my rune information because it has every single rune and the stuff beside the information beside it and it has a appendix for divination a bunch of symbols like boat books bottles what they mean you know whether it be your dream, you know, whatever you're trying to decipher, it has that meaning beside that symbol. And then it tells you about some magical stones and crystals. It's the next step up um, from all these books that I would recommend, like, right after, honestly. And if I can... Alright. So hopefully I can find this one online to link because I did buy this a really long time ago when I was 13 and... A really long time ago. It's been like... You know what? I'm just flashing it up on the screen because I don't feel like doing the math now because pregnancy brain is really real. Um, 
And so if I, hopefully I can find this book online and I will link it in the description if I can. If not, you know, carry this with you in your heart and in your, your mind and think about it before you go to bed at night and cry over the fact that you don't have it. I'm just kidding, don't actually cry. That would be really sad and it's also just a material object and there's plenty of other information out there. You have the internet if you're watching this. It is an endless source of information and you will be guided to the information that you are needing to learn or wanting to learn. So it just takes a little bit of investigating. <laughs> but um, that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I am really excited to you know, be back on YouTube, said that in my pregnancy announcement video and I am looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video and talking about doing whatever I'm going to be doing there and I hope you guys have a wonderful blessed day. Bye guys!